Hey golfers, Michael Geiger and Larry Bobka from Second Swing here again on the YouTube channel. And today, Larry and I are welcoming a special guest, Liam from Embrace Putters. Liam, it's a pleasure to have you on the channel. It's a pleasure to not only have you with us, but with Handmade Sticks as you are joining our stable of master craftsmen. You've got a bunch of putters coming our way that we're super excited about. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, talk to you guys and obviously be a part of the program. It's an uh, exciting venture you guys have got going on and one that I've been following for a little bit of time now. So it's excited to be a, a part of it. I'm excited. Well, the pleasure is ours. As Second Swing subscribers might have picked up, uh, you are not from the United States. Uh, you are from England. Um, I know you, you went to college in the United States and, and you're not new to uh, America, but I was just curious to kind of start out, what was really the things you appreciated the most about America when you got here? And, and what's maybe one or two things uh, that you maybe still miss uh, back home in England? Yeah, apart from the obvious of uh, family, um, obviously family and friends are going to be priority number one. I uh, love any time they can come out and visit. It's obviously I'm, I'm based here in Phoenix, Scottsdale area of Arizona. Um, nice and warm here all year round, so we get to play golf all year round, which is beautiful. So get a lot of family and friends come out to visit and play some good golf. Uh, miss, miss a little bit of the food back home. Um, just a different style of golf over there more link style of golf um, than it is here, and especially in Arizona, where it's a lot more target golf based. Uh, moving to Arizona, I moved out here in 2009. Um, as you mentioned, for college golf, I played for Grand Canyon University, um, played there over there until uh, 2015, which I, when I graduated with a master's degree, um, and then just kind of started, started what I'm doing today as, a, as sort of a hobby, and it just grew and grew and grew, and the, the passion was just there just for me to keep sort of driving that on and uh here i am today <laughs> yeah so, I so 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 liam what's the master's degree in so i have a master's degree in business um wasn't really too sure what i wanted to do a lot as a lot of uh young golfers have they had the dream of obviously playing on the european or the pga tour and that was a dream of mine and kind of realized came to the uh, realization that it wasn't gonna pan out for me in that sense so i obviously wanted to uh sort of further my education, go into something that's going to make me more well, well-rounded for the, the business environment. And master's degree just seemed to be a perfect fit. I had an extra year on the golf team there. So I started my master's program and still wasn't sure what sort of avenues I wanted to get into. So decided that business was kind of encompassed all, all aspects there. Well, nice. I, I, I can tell you, I fit you for clubs down in Arizona. You still hit it pretty good, so. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, Liam, obviously we've established you're a heck of a player. You had kind of an early interest in business. So obviously, you know, I think working in, in the equipment business and putter specifically was a natural fit. But what was really the kind of eureka moment that, and, and maybe the, the moment that convinced you that uh, a future in, in putters and, and refinishing and creating your own putters was uh, kind of a good career path for you? Yeah, so I just kind of in college and, and, and prior to college, I would always mess around with, with putters and try to change them up and polish them and buff them and change paint fills just to make them look different than anybody else's um, in my very, very early days. And then I was fortunate enough to uh, come across Lamont Man, as you guys know very well, working out of your Scottsdale location of Second Swing. Um, I was fortunate enough to work out of his workshop for four years out at Sunridge Canyon out here in Arizona. Um, our meeting was at, during my college days when I was caddying out at Phoenix Country Club. Um, Lamont was out there one day and he had a putter in his bag. I'd never seen it before. And this was the time when I was just kind of doing those buffing up and polishing and paint fills. And I, I pulled this putter out of a month's bag as I'm caddying for him. And I'm just blown away. I probably bugged the hell out of him for the whole round. <laughs> I'm, sure I, I'm sure I bugged the hell out of him still now. Uh, we're good, really good friends. I consider him a, a mentor in the industry and something that he really accelerated uh, my path into what I'm doing today. Obviously, as you guys mentioned, I have a, a playing background so I definitely try and incorporate that into into my line um with my line in in, in regards to my line i like to uh, 
make sure that it uh, performs well, first of all. Um, and then from there, let's let's get crazy with it and design it from an art standpoint. Um, yeah, early days, I, I sent a lot of stuff off to uh, Scotty Cameron's custom shop and a few other refinished companies like BOS Gold out in California. And just kind of really just got the bug. Um, Lamont took me under his wing in in my early days. And then, yeah, like I said, just grew and grew and grew from there until I outgrew Lamont's workshop and he kindly um, sort of shuffled me out of his shop. We, we were working at a 400 square foot workspace. And at that point I was doing anywhere from 50, 60 to a hundred putters on a monthly basis. And again, there wasn't a lot of room in there for, for us to be working literally elbow to elbow and there's some cool stuff in there. So he really pushed me, pushed me on and let's say pushed me out in a friendly way um, to grow into a bigger workspace. So that definitely uh, obviously put me sort of on my path to uh, where I am today. So I can contribute a lot of my success to Le Mans. Um, he's an amazing individual and then his knowledge is uh, second to none. So yeah, I have to attribute a lot of my success today to him. Nice. Well, I, I have to tell you, I've, I've been to your workshop in Scottsdale. It is, it is putter heaven, maybe, you know, you just start opening drawers and there's, there's putters that are ready to be built. And some of the coolest things I've seen, and I've, I've been doing this for a long time. So uh, that's why we're so excited to have you play a part of handmade sticks. Yeah, it's it's awesome. It's a, it's a good feeling. Uh, you're seeing a grown man come into to a, a, a putter studio, and and just how the big smile they get on their face from seeing either whether it's their own putter that we've customized for them, and they've seen the, the end result and how blown away they are, or whether it's seeing something that we've created and they've never seen anything like it before. It's I mean we we see it. Oh, it's we we like to say that it's uh, like a, a kid at Disneyland or. A, like a woman at a shoe shop, right? That's kind of like what, what our environment is. We get we get guys in here all the time and we got our repeat customers that will come in and, you know, they'll give us the little dig like, hey, every time I come in here, I end up buying something. Like I've got, got, to, got to stay away from your shop. So yeah, it's a good feeling. It's uh, well, nice to know that you were appreciated. Like I told you earlier, um, I opened the box at our store in Minnetonka and it took me about three seconds to sell one already. So there, there's five available now instead of six. <laughs> yeah, it's always, it always puts like, again, like I never, I'm, I'm in this for the uh, passion of doing it. That was why I always started it and I still have that passion burning today. So it's uh, super exciting how, how this has grown and, and where it's going to continue to grow. And obviously being a part of, of your team here over at Second Swing and being part of the Handmade Sticks option I'm, I'm super excited to see where that takes it cool we are too yeah liam i'm, I'm interested you mentioned that lamont man was, was a huge influence on you and i know you've done a lot of work with with scotty cameron putters how did you sort of channel those influences and at the same time create your own kind of design philosophy and, and maybe for golfers uh, unaware of your work how would you describe your design philosophy yeah, definitely. So um, obviously coming from a custom standpoint, starting off working with other brands, uh, the great thing about starting from that point would be that we could see how different parts were built from different manufacturers. Um, so that really gave us kind of a, a, a big sort of overview of, of the whole market, as opposed to just, uh, again, Scotty Cameron being the leader in, in the part of market, obviously, naturally our 85 percent of our work is is typically scotty cameron putters right now obviously we're trying to make that change and transition into our part line but obviously you have the classic designs from from the ping days like the answer and the answer two so obviously that's a very highly sought after head shape so we we took that sort of design of head shape and then we put our spin on it to make it look our own unique to us um obviously there's subtle changes every every manufacturer out there has something similar to the answer and the answer to style, obviously, it's tiger tiger putts with it, right? So, I mean, right. anything that tiger uses, it's going to draw draw big attention. So, that was really our starting point. And then from there, we just, you know, from a design perspective, what can we do to to fit it to the golfer? Um, again, being from a good playing background, we want to build something that's perfect for that golfer, as opposed to just allowing them to come in a shop and and buy something off a shelf that doesn't necessarily 
fit their game or their pattern stroke, I say. Um, we like to do some, you know, research and development before. And then once we produce our putters, we do a prototype and we like to test it to make sure that our putters perform well from from an initial standpoint. And then from there on, let's let's build it to that golfer, uh, whether that's changing out the necks. I mean, we offer long necks. We have 10 different styles of, of, of necks styles and uh that again that can fit into the the golfer's uh sort of pine stroke well and that really fits into what we do at second swing with with having quintex in all our facilities that we really tailor a putter to somebody and for us now it's just another opportunity to get a beautiful putter and be able to fit them exactly what they need and hey if we don't ex have exactly what we need we can go right to the manufacturer to you now and say, hey, somebody wants this, this, and this, and uh, you can build it for us. Yeah, definitely. And uh, again, we've already started to work very closely with the Scottsdale store. So we've had customers of ours go in there and get a fit in so that we can get their, their, their data and their analytics of their stroke. So that way we have the information ready to hand and we can build something for them based off that data, as opposed to them coming to us and say, well, I really like the look of this or look of this, but maybe that doesn't perform best for their game. So let's let's find something that performs best for your game first, and then let's go crazy with the design. We can we can do almost unlimited design. So uh, that's that's the cool part of it. It's it's working from uh, what works best for your game. Let's add something to it that that maybe makes it you know something that when you get out on the green with your friends or even if, you're, if all the way up to the PJ Tour, right? Let's let's build something that's a tour player can play, but looking down at the putt, it looks simple and classic, but like standing behind it, we have all that artistic uh, design in there that's not distracting from from an address standpoint. So yeah, it's exciting to, uh, again, partner with you guys. And obviously we've been working very closely with you guys from my initial beginnings where I used to purchase used clubs from you guys and, and you know, pretty them up and, and, and resell them for our website. So yeah, it's been a it's been a great journey, and second swing's been a huge part of it already. So it's it's awesome to be a part of the handmade sticks. Well, you started as a customer, and now you're a supplier. Exactly the best way, right? <laughs> it's the circle of life. Liam, you mentioned a couple times sort of the artistic spin that you put on your <laughs> designs. I'm curious. I, I I feel that the putter in golf is the most. It's the club that's the biggest collision of engineering and art. And I think one thing that's so cool about your putters is you mentioned you have 10 different neck styles. You have every trick in the book when it comes to kind of the engineering side, yet with your laser work and your fills and the refinishing, you have almost unlimited potential on kind of the artistic side. How do you view that kind of push and pull between engineering and art? And just personally, do you sort of view yourself more as an engineer or, or more as an artist? I would, I would say I'd fall more on the artist side of things. Um, I definitely, again, falling back to, we, we want a putter in your hand that's going to perform best for your game. Um, so that's, that's definitely starting point number one. Uh, from the artistic standpoint, it's more of a collaboration with the, uh, the customer. Um, what, what are your interests? Is it family orientated? Is it a sports theme? Is it just something that's unique that's never been seen before? Um, there's many different aspects and avenues that we can, like run down with the customer on on building something from a an artistic design standpoint. I definitely I definitely consider myself more of an artist than I do uh, an engineer per se. But obviously, there's an aspect of both of those involved in the in the process. Um, again, it's it's a lot of open communication. Um, we try to put as much information on our website as we can with regards to the finishes and the types of metals and materials that will uh, work best with those finishes. There are there are finishes that work great with certain metals and there's finishes that don't work great with other metals. Um, obviously, you have carbon steel, for instance, that's uh, it's always going to be prone to rusting without consistent maintenance. Um, there are ways around that with adding plated finishes to prevent the maintenance acts as like a barrier to to that metal from hitting the elements and you know rusting and stuff like that. Um, as part of nowadays have gone more towards the the standard I, I guess you would say would be like a scotty cameron which would be made from 303 stainless steel there's a lot less rust resistance in that um so you don't have to worry about the part of rusting as much that that offers slightly less finish options uh, carbon 
has a lot more finish options, but it's just dependent upon what the customer wants. Do you want something like Jordan Spieth's trusty, rusty gamer that he has that's all looks rusted and worn and, and, and guys love that and then other guys don't like that. So it's about that communication of, of what the guy wants uh, that's going to be using it and uh, yeah, and just kind of really go from there. So, like I said, a lot of, lot of communication. Yeah, I mean, you look at a putter like this that we we just pulled out of the box this morning. I mean, classic styling, but you pull it out with your, your handiwork, some handmade sticks in the back here, and I mean, it's just a beautiful putter. I mean, it, one, and we know it's going to work, but two, it's just like, it's a work of art. I mean, like, I'm, you know, you're purchasing a painting that I can make putts with. Yeah. That's a that's a great way to put it. It's for us. We get we get a lot of uh, golfers that will turn up and play, and they haven't told their their buddies that they're getting any work done. They show up on the green, and all their all their friends are asking, "Where did you get that done? Where did you get?" So we get a lot of referrals. We get a lot of uh, repeat customers, which is obviously great great for us. It makes us obviously feel good knowing that we're doing good work, and and you know, from from local people or even people from all over the world that whether they're in the Scottsdale area, they like to stop by just to, to meet us in person. So it's, it's always great to actually put a face to some of the customers that you're interacting with from like an email standpoint uh, through, through our website. It's, it's great to actually meet that person in it live and just see their reaction and kind of their, their golfing story. It's, I could sit here and talk all day about, about to anybody that loves golf and we could just literally talk all day. It's, I'm just passionate about the game. I love the game. I want to be able to put my spin on the game. And I think through my design and artwork, I think that's what I'm, I'm trying to do. So I'm glad you guys are a part of, of, of our company now. And we're glad to be a part of your company. And I think we can grow this thing. And I'm super excited to see where it goes. Well, I, I don't want to speak for Michael, but, you know, we spend a lot of time working on this Handmade Sticks logo a few years back. <laughs> And to see it on one of your putters right now, it just makes it, it, it just looks wonderful. You know, it, it kind of makes all those extra hours and time that we spent to get this thing. It's just, it's just awesome to see it on one of your embrace putters. No, it's a, it's a super good feeling knowing that you've, uh, something you've put a lot of your time and effort into and, you know, blood, sweat and tears, quite literally, uh, uh, to, to, you know, produce something that, people that people love and they look at and they they, they view it as art and they're, they're again we get people like in here that are super passionate but like I say sometimes sometimes we, we we're speaking to them for 90 minutes and we don't even realize that hey it's it's been you know 90 minutes now i need to <laughs> i need to get some work done yeah. i got some other customers orders <laughs> to get back to but yeah just, just the love for the game and yeah again knowing that you guys put so much time and effort into it it's it's awesome to see it on a part of ours cool yeah, Liam, you mentioned those blood, sweat, and tears. I know the, the the process of designing and building a putter is incredibly long and complex, and it requires, as you mentioned, collaboration with the customer themselves. What's the most satisfying moment of the process for you? Is it late at night when you're by yourself and you kind of crack the design? Is it when you hand it off to the customer and, and they see it for the first time? What's what's really the moment that that makes it all worth it for you? I think through the years, it's definitely changed. I think early, early on, it was uh, just when starting up literally out of, you know, out of my house, um, it was just getting that initial message from Instagram or Facebook or wherever, whatever platform that may be. It was just having that initial interaction with customers and, and seeing their passion and how much they love what we do and what we can offer. Um, and as, as we've kind of grown it today, it's, it's a lot of it is uh, seeing it out on the golf course being used. Uh, see, again, seeing customers face to face, seeing their reaction. I mean, we've, we've done anything basic to as complex as you can imagine. And, you know, we've seen full grown men with tear come to their eyes because it's something that may have been passed down from their grandfather to their father to now that they own um, through, through their years. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just super cool to see people's reactions and, and everyone's different and unique. And, and that's the beauty of, of what we do. Everybody has comes to us with different ideas, stuff that sometimes we don't even think of. And that's, it's like, again, it's a collaboration. So it's, it's fun to see what the customer is going to bring to the table and then work together to actually create something that they're going to be super happy with to show their friends and, and hopefully make a lot of parts of it. 
Yeah, well, Liam, I got to tell you, too, when I opened the box today, I'm not a big head cover guy, but your <laughs> head covers are the best. <laughs> just, just saying, I mean, we got a little, we got a little mixture of what you sent us here, and uh, I might think about even using a head cover one of these days. I love it. Love to hear it. No, uh, anything, anything that pretty much comes out of my shop is uh, something that I would use personally. Uh, I like to treat anybody's part that's in our workshop as if it was my own. Um, that way I feel like I've, again, I put those blood, sweat and tears into everybody's part that, that every part touches my hands through the workshop. So it's, uh, it's satisfying knowing that somebody is, is happy on the back end. And, and again, whether that be through a head cover, whether that be through just us selling them a grip and they love our work and, you know, whether it's a complete rebuild in one of our heads, whether it's refinishing one of their own, it's, it's just great to see everybody's reaction to how they respond to what we, what we can do to their part. So yeah, I never get bored of that moment. Yeah, Liam, I'm curious, you mentioned that kind of the genesis of your career was uh, a little humble. It was a 400 square foot uh, workspace, shoulder to shoulder with Lamont Man. Now you've you've kind of taken the next step in your career. I'm I'm curious. What do you see as sort of the future of Embrace Putters? What's what's on the horizon for you? Yeah, I mean, obviously I have goals of where I want to want to take the business, and I'd, I'd love to have my putters in in hands of PJ touring professionals. Um, Starting to get a lot of athletes and celebrities reach out to us. Um, it's 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 super cool seeing you know, through, through a friend of a friend that you'll get a celebrity that's, you know, an A-lister that will text you. And it's like, this guy can't be truly texting me. This has to be a joke, right? But no, like, they're deadly serious. And it's, it's cool to see that guys of that sort of status are uh, reaching out and and and, and, and wanting, wanting our stuff, right? So um, for me, just growing it, growing it, I'd love to be able to have my partners on the PJ Tour. Um, that's obviously an ultimate end goal. Um, just obviously there's many guys that I actually grew up playing with that, that are on the tours um, so it's just fun to see them obviously been rooting for them growing up in England obviously I grew up playing against guys like Rory McIlroy on a monthly basis I grew up in the England national squad with uh, Tommy Fleetwood who was a, my, my ultimate shot partner for some of the for the events that we played together um, so that that was all good fun stuff so obviously seeing those guys and seeing how down to earth and humble they were in their early beginnings and and that they've managed to keep that same personality and and persona about them um in today and obviously rory being one of if not arguably the greatest golfer right now um and for many years to see how humble and down to earth he still is and at the end of the day we're all human right so it's just having that that same interaction with each other and, and treating everybody with respect so it's great to see that although that although like we like to put them you know above above ourselves as golfers like the amateur golfer like they are elite athletes they're humans at the end of the day so that's kind of where i see my path is just having creating those great relationships i've created relationships with uh, customers through through doing my business that i probably would have never spoken to if i'd gone into the corporate world and continue to stay in that corporate world so it's yeah. I just I just love the, the, the people aspect side of things and, and get to know and meet new people and that's really that alongside with my artistic side of the the parts is what's really my passion and drives me to come into work every day and I say work it, it doesn't feel like work to me because I love doing it so much that it's uh, my Monday is different than most people's Mondays. Um, so yeah, it's it's just exciting. Yeah, Liam, we. We really appreciate that, and like Larry's mentioned, we, we couldn't be happier to be a, a, a small part of your journey. We know that, that you're headed for big things, and um, it's, it's really cool to be able to work with you. I want to get you out on, on one final question. Uh, I know it's, it's a Ryder Cup year. If you had to pick <laughs> one, one of the, you have to pick one of these two things, one of these two doors. Either the United States wins the Ryder Cup, or your Chelsea football club's rival Tottenham wins the Premier League. You got to pick one. What's what, 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 what are you picking? I mean, Tottenham isn't my favorite club. It's probably one of my least favorite clubs. <laughs> right. So yeah. I'm probably going to have to go with the USA. 
Uh, okay. I, I feel I feel somewhat American now. I guess uh, my friends like like to make fun of me because obviously being English over here, I get made fun of. And then going back home, my friends say that I now sound American. So I'm kind of caught in between the middle. <laughs> I think myself seventy uh, percent English and thirty percent American. So I, I just want to see a good Ryder Cup. I think uh, anything that's tight that comes down to the wire is is always exciting to see. And just again, competitive good high quality golf is what we all love to watch so hopefully uh hopefully we can see a good Ryder Cup we'll aim into that but uh yeah Liam first off speaking for Larry um we 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 couldn't thank you more yeah I mean I just uh, excited to get somebody that with your passion and it's always great to see somebody as, as 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 someone older in the business it's really great to see somebody like you that's younger in the business that has the passion and the drive to make great products. So um, this relationship, we're just we're just thrilled to have it. Yeah, likewise, it's uh, it's a two way street. I mean, I'm I'm so happy to be on board with you guys, Larry. Obviously, you have amazing knowledge in the industry. You're very well connected. It was uh, obviously great meeting you at the PGA show, and obviously, anytime I meet you, I learn something new from you, and it's it's just brilliant to be in your presence and same with you Michael it's uh, you know happy happy guy like very very well presented and you know love to be around you guys in the second swing and the handmade stick so I'm um, I couldn't I've said it probably six times now but I'm uh, couldn't be more excited to board with you guys <laughs> awesome well that's fantastic well golfers out there if you're looking to get one of these embrace putters for yourself uh, you better act quick because uh, they, they tend to, to fly off the shelves so check out secondswing.com to pick up one of these for yourself and uh, I, I would stay tuned in the future because these will not be the last embrace putters on secondswing.com. Liam, for the last time we want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing your talent and your passion with the Handmade Sticks stable and uh, we hope to see you soon. Looking forward to it. Thanks guys. <laughs>